Hey folks, and welcome to Drinking Alone with Friends, a podcast where three friends drink alone together. My name's Chris. What up? It's your boy, Tud. And I'm Obert. And happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank thank you. you, Chris. Yeah. Will you be my Valentine? Well, didn't Will you... Will you both be my Valentine? <laughs> didn't you get your little uh, your little card in the mail that had Aladdin on it, and it he held up a big heart that said, Will you be mine? Yeah, but it said the big, sexy, hairy guy, and I didn't know who that man <laughs> <laughs> i mean i don't know who else it would have been <laughs> right <Good point. laughs> uh, did you get did you get mine had the little leprechaun and it said you're lucky to be loved yeah i didn't like the graphic things he was doing to that bunny though <laughs> it was really i don't know i mean i enjoyed parts of it i'll just say that <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and I know the mail hasn't gotten here from Montana yet. So. Oh yeah, don't worry. Your uh, your Valentines are coming. I'm sure they're they're you know just in the mail. They're on the way. <laughs> <sighs> but we all hope you have a great Valentine's Day. We yeah, I'm imagining that you're sitting or you know sitting there, candlelit dinner, just like concluding, and you and your romantic partner are, are sitting down to listen to drinking alone with friends. So here, right. you know. I, you... I imagine that every couple in America has been like, okay, it's time for, you know, naughty time, wink, wink. And they were, the, the other person was like, wait, 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 we haven't listened to Drinking Alone with Friends. Right. The, the sensuous are, sounds of those three we, friends. Are we the soundtrack to, to that now? No, I didn't say that. They can, they can listen to us whenever they want. <laughs> <laughs> forget, forget the Marvin Gaye and the Gladys Knight. Yeah. Put on DAWF podcast. Right. That's right. Yeah. I think we need to get into a whole new category on iTunes. <laughs> yeah, relationship advice or something. <laughs> no, that's your other podcast. Oh, right, right, right. That's true. But we've been on this like weird, like you know, recording and then waiting like fifteen days and then recording again. Yeah, it feels weird. So, yeah, we had a lot to catch up. We're pulling, on. pulling back the curtain here, folks, a little bit just so you can see behind the the scenes. Yeah. It's yeah, really right. messy behind the curtain. We like to keep that curtain closed. But, yeah, uh, that's <laughs> not on Valentine's Day. We don't. Not on Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah. The curtain closes why we do a podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but that means it's been a long time without some drinking. Yes. So yes, yeah. it does. So who's who's the thirstiest? Wait, that's a sex thing, right, or something like thirst, right? Yeah, it is. It okay. is. Oh, we're all thirsty. We're all Valentine's thirsty on this Valentine's Day. <laughs> I think. Ooh. Um, you know what? Let me go first because I I need a drink. Okay. Yeah. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna peel back the curtain a little bit more. Um, I'm <laughs> so much I, curtain peeling. This curtain so keeps much curtain getting, peeling. Yeah, we're we're now on a on a big stage, and this is how big this curtain is. <laughs> so um, so I am currently doing keto, which is in. Preparation of getting, you know, swole for my wedding in July. So yeah, I have, is there a, do you have a hashtag associated with this yet? With your with your journey for swole? Your No. This is where we edited the the, the hashtag. The hashtag that, that, that we think of. That we hashtag came up with. Hashtag TudFit. That's a good one. I like that. All right. Hashtag so, Tud fit into his suit. Hashtag TudFit. <laughs> it's just hashtag, hashtag tud, fit. tud fit. But we know in that parentheses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can put parentheses in hashtags, but if you can, <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> or hashtag fit Tud into suit. Yeah, there that's, we go. That's pretty good too. Yeah. Yep. So, all right. So, anyway, so I've been doing keto, and part of keto is your, you know, keto is basically making sure that you eat under 20 grams of carbs a day. So, drinking on keto is a little bit tough because obviously, drinking a beer, especially the beers that we all know and love will completely toss you out of ketosis and won't really help the weight loss process. So in my epic adventure of finding something I'm able to drink, I've stumbled upon something called a Smirnoff Spiked Sparkling Seltzer. Uh, this flavor is Berry Lemonade. So I told the guys about this over the weekend. They all laughed at me and said, you know, we're going to make fun of you for drinking that. And I said, well, I'm going to bring it on the podcast because it tastes just like a vodka seltzer. And I was told I was wrong. So, in the spirit of now, today's... Now, now, I have a very important question. Can you still ice someone with a uh, Smirnoff seltzer? I don't know. <laughs> I guess I there's know. only one way to find out, unless you got to try and ice Caitlin sometime. There, yes, I will report back. <laughs> yeah, see if she drinks it. So, so today, I have brought two drinks to the pot. One, 
is, as I said, the Smirnoff Spiked Seltzer Berry Lemonade Flavored Sp- Spiked Seltzer. But I've also made a cocktail, as Obert would like to refer it as, with a sh- shot and a half of Tito's Vodka, a Raspberry Lemonade Polar Seltzer, and a half a teaspoon of lemon juice. Just so I can compare them to show the guys how similar they are to each other. Yeah, I'm imagining also if your wallet is on a diet, or your budget is on a diet, I don't know, if you're trying to, to keep your wallet fat while your waistline is thin, <laughs> you want to do the make your own drink here. Also true. Yeah, yeah. That's a good, point. There's, good point. There's a little bit of a satisfaction to taking the seltzer, the spike seltzer can and going like this. Well, that sounds See? satisfying. Now you're going to put your wallet on a diet. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you're still working out those royalty fees. <laughs> so... Let's let's taste the uh, my first off we're going to try the spark the spike spark sparkling seltzer berry lemonade flavor by Smirnoff. So, I get a lot of a lot of berry flavor, not a lot of lemonade flavor, but it is it is a, it's a solid drink. I mean, it, you can't really taste the booze. It's only got 1 gram of carbs. It's, it's 4.5% ABV. It's a 12 ounce can. It's only 90 calories per can. It's actually really healthy for you. Uh, healthy is relative, I think. <laughs> I think he meant in like in comparison to drinking a beer. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Not in. Not like if, if it was up between like lettuce and the spike seltzer. <laughs> right. Or just I don't know alcohol and regular seltzer. Right. right. So yeah. overall, I mean, I like it. It's it's solid. You know, it tastes a little bit different than a vodka seltzer. I'd probably give it a this this particular flavor of them. I like. I'd probably give it a three two five. Okay, that's pretty good. And I'm surprised ninety. Like uh, your the, your cocktail that you made, I would guess is probably like. The cocktail that you made is probably like 20 calories, if I had to guess, because there's not a lot of calories in any of those ingredients. I don't know. How many calories is in a shot of vodka? 98 calories per 1.5 ounces of Tito's. So, okay. So, they're about the same calories then. So, about the same calories. Um, so, let's let's compare my homemade Smirnoff drink. So, I get a lot less berry flavor on this one, a lot more lemon flavor. Obviously, the, the half a teaspoon of lemon kind of helps with that a little bit. But they taste surprisingly similar. Clearly, the, the two different seltzer types are eerily similar as well. Raspberry lemonade versus berry lemonade. Right. Yeah. No, that's good, though. It sounds like you can stop buying your your cans unless you need them on the go. But I like the, I like the cracking of the can. Well, you crack the seltzer can. Right. Well, yeah, you're right. But then I have, to like pour, I have to pour it in a cup. More cans. Right. That's true. I have to bring, you know, multiple... Like, I can grab I can grab a twelve pack of the smear off and go. It's exactly like I said. It's handy for when you're drinking in the car. Right. I don't have to like <laughs> like with this with this Tito's Out thing. Like public. I have to br- I have to bring a shot glass. I have to bring a cup. I have to bring seltzer. I have to bring Tito's. It's a whole ordeal. The, I have to bring ice. Yeah. Yeah. So you gave a three two five for the first one. Yeah, I think I would give my own probably similar. I'd probably still call it a three two five. I'd probably make. This again, or drink this berry flavored Smirnoff one. Oh, so there we go. And just so for all our people doing keto out there, I don't know how many of our listeners are actually doing that, but the Smirnoff drink is only one gram of carbs, and the Tito's drink is zero. Okay, that's. So I mean, the Tito's drink is actually healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's pretty good. Uh, Think well, about it. We're all excited and cheering you on for the hashtag Tud Fit. Hashtag Tudfit. Now, I, I do want to give one caution, by the way, just because I ran into this this weekend. There are other spike seltzers out in the market, and they have more carbs in their cans. So, this is would you of all the ones available in your area? Is this the the fewest carbs? This was the lowest. I went through all the bo- all the spike seltzer boxes have the nutrition facts on them. I went through all the boxes. This one had the lowest by far. Yeah, I noticed that when you are on a keto or. I, I know I have a few friends that have done like the whole 30 and that kind of things. You have to basically read every ingredient of every label of everything just to make sure you're not in violation or else yep. the keto police come and get you. Right. But it does work, yeah. surprisingly. That's, so. Yeah, that's good. I mean, how would you guys feel if every beer had the calories li- listed on it? Like they were all like Bud Light? Yeah, I assume Bud Light lists the calories, calories on it now. Yeah, but if it's let's just say if every beer had a nutrition panel like you know literally every other food in America, I I think I would like it because at least I would I, at least I would know. Right. Yeah, I don't really you know like I have no idea compared to say a can of soda how much a typical beer is, you know an IPA that I would drink is, and I'm assuming it's a lot. So I do have this list that shows kind of the nutrition facts for certain beers. 
Um, we can throw it up as a link on the show in the show notes for people to go check out. Oh, that'd be interesting. Yeah, it. I'm gonna I'm gonna caution the listeners. If you don't want to know, <laughs> do not check the box because you might be sick to your stomach about the calories of some of these beers. <laughs> um, I can but it imagine. is quite it is quite interesting to see like what you know. Stouts are actually the healthier of the all the beers, which is surprising. But yeah, you know, and like the IPAs are like the worst. It probably explains why they're so delicious. Yeah. I mean, yeah, stats yeah. delicious too, though. So yeah. So do you have? A, can you give us one example of a particularly agree- surprising one that you found on that list? Well, we all know Guinness is the most healthiest beer you can right. drink. Right, less calories than skim milk. Yep, it is. I think it weighs in at what one twenty a, a bottle for calories. I think that's. I think that's the stat on it. But like an I like a, a sip of sunshine is like three hundred and fifty calories. <laughs> yeah. Well then, <laughs> and that's yeah, and that's like the that sip of sunshine by today's standards is a tame IPA. Right. Yeah, you start getting into all these New England IPAs. Or the milkshake IPAs. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason they're called milkshake IPAs. Right. Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> right. you, drink, you drink three of them and you're like, oh, I went over my daily allowance for calories. Yeah. Not to mention the carbs in one of them is like 38. Wow. So you could Yikes. have one over two days, no big deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll split it between Caitlin and I and we could drink one. There you go. It's- that's your dessert. You get one shot of of IPA. <laughs> By day like twelve, it's like flat and disgusting. And yeah, great. Well, so I'm gonna move on to um, my beer. Then um, I'm excited to share this beer with the podcast because I had it before, and actually, yeah, I had my my parents were here visiting, and they had some of these, and they really enjoyed it. This is the Mountain Man Scotch Ale by Jeremiah Johnson. Uh, I don't think I've featured them before in the podcast. They're another montana brewery and um they they pride themselves so they're out of great falls which is three hours east of here over the mountains are the falls adequate there or are they great they're okay i'd say they're better than good (laughs) on a scale of one to five how would you rate the falls yeah (laughs) the falls get a four five four point five that's pretty good that's pretty good falls yeah but they're in montana's golden triangle which is just an area in montana where they grow a lot of wheat so they take pride in um, where they source their ingredients from. And it says here, right on the can, locally sourced, the barley is from four miles away, the honey is from 28 miles away, and the water is from four miles away. And it lo- it's locally canned. So I'm, I'm kind of upset that the honey comes from so far away. I know. Yeah. Right? Well, I'm assuming that the, the bees pollinate over that whole area. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, as we know, the bees are brought from Montana around exactly. the gold, around the country. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Yep. They take pride in the fact that all the ingredients are from nearby. They really stress that. But uh, I'm going to give this a, a taste for the pod. Here we go. Yeah, another scotch ale. We've had an influx of scotch ales, I feel, over the last... I got to tell you, I like, the, I like the can on this one, too. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, um, good can art. Yeah, this is... It's very smooth for, for a scotch ale. Um, like, almost velvety smooth on the tongue. I uh, definitely get those notes of honey, a little bit of, I think, maybe cherry flavor on the back, and like a little bit of sweet fruit on the back. Is there some black malt in there? Oh, you know there's black malt. <laughs> um, this was interesting. I had never seen this before, but they list on the can the SRM value, which is a term I wasn't familiar with until I had to Google it. It stands for, it stands for standard reference method. Yeah, how do you not know this? The SRM stands for standard reference method. <laughs> yeah, and what it basically all it is is just a measure of the color. So, oh, interesting. Yeah, the color of the wort. So the SRM on this is twenty-seven, um, which is a nice dark amber color. Um, I think the beer because that dark is, malt. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. They they list the individual malt malts are on, on their website. They say it's Montana Pale Two Row. You know, for some of that base, the um, Carapils and caramel for the the crystal and the dark chocolate midnight wheat and smoked cherry malt for the the black malts. So they got a little bit of all three in there. Um, wow, very cool. Look at that, people. I know. Yeah, see. yeah. And um, I think I'm a I'm a big fan of this beer. I'm going to give this a four point oh. Okay. Wow. Wow, that's pretty good. That's really like, and especially for you, that's really good. Right. That's yeah, like I've a... been on a three five three seven five rut lately. This one. This one pushes it over over the limit and i think it's um 
it's at the perfect temperature right now too. It's just warm enough where I can really enjoy all the flavors coming out. Now, would you say Scotch malts should be served warmer than an IPA or other types of even a stout, maybe? Yeah, I think it's. I would say it's right up there with a stout. Okay, um, I'm not he, a fan of Scotch I, or Scotch ales as we've talked about. So yeah, I think you would like this one. Um, I could tell you that if this was on your list, it would probably clock in with. Some pretty high calories, but uh... <laughs> is it actually, is it sweet? Is that because sweets the sweeter beers tend to be higher? Yeah, I mean, I definitely get the honey flavor coming through at this temperature. Okay, yeah. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Chris. Okay, Chris, what are yes. you drinking? What are you uh, drinking alone with us today? So I have a really cool beer from a really cool local brewery that's relatively new. I think I talked about them briefly on the podcast before. Oh, that was bad. But I didn't go into too much detail, but I was actually able to go in and meet with the owner, head brewer, talk to him for a little while, got kind of like a little bit of a backstory on the brewery, and it's Gladiator Brewing here in Clarksville. Nice. They're... I notice you've been drinking a lot of bottles lately, too. I just have to point this out for the listeners who can't see. Yeah. Um. I don't know why that's been a case. It's just... So happens to be a lot of bottles. <laughs> uh, I think it's just because I had some bombers and things of that nature. But this brewery only bottles their beer. Well, bottles and kegs, of course. But they're a new brewery. And this is their Spartacus, which is wow. a Dunkel Weiss beer. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. I'm a big fan of Dunkels. Yeah. So uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar, I think we've had one on the pod before. Yeah, we had the Winter at Noon from Kalispell Brewing. I did there that one. There we go. Yes, so uh, also known as your Dunkel, uh, like your German Dunkelweizen, which is essentially it's brewed a lot like uh, your Hefeweizens, but they are just darker. Dunkel means dark. I thought so, that wasn't oh, German okay. enough. Uh, no, you don't I think thought so. That was pretty good. It's the Dunkel I felt like I was. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah I felt like I was just transported to Germany for a second <laughs> there. Uh, so the cool thing about this brewery, and you know what? Let, let's get to the beer first. Uh, yeah, let's then, do the beer. Let's do the beer, and then I'll get into the brewery, because it's pretty pretty neat. So here we go. This is Spartacus from Gladiator Brewing. I just I love the name. Yeah, definitely. I'm actually really jealous that they that that's their brewery name. You wish that was your brewery name? I, I mean, I wish I owned a brewery, but <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I'll take any name for a brewery if I owned it. Yes. This is a very good uh, Dunkelweizen. It is like you would get with a lot of, like, them it's it, you get a lot of sweetness it's you get a little bit of fruitiness in the middle and then i don't know it just uh then like it really finishes off a little bit a little bit of bitterness but not too not too crazy you guys are making me jealous i really want a beer yeah yeah you should you should just have one uh, <laughs> stay strong todd i'll be the angel because will be the devil <laughs> that's right <laughs> i hope we're on the appropriate sides of your screen for that to make sense just imagine we're each on one shoulder yeah right. that, that does make sense yeah. <laughs> so it's very dark i don't know if you can yeah you guys can see it but it looks I mean, delicious yeah i wonder yeah. what that is, what the srm on that is uh you know, I, you know <laughs> I don't know i had never i had not heard that let's see i doubt it's on here but it is not um but it's uh 5.01 percent alcohol very wow very precise there very precise there but a very cool bottle art as well you'll see it on the instagram for you guys if you guys that oh, that badass. is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So the beer is really good. I'm gonna give it let me see. I'll give it I'll give it a four. I think it's I think it's good. I like this this like going in and meeting uh James, who is the head brewer, and his his wife Funda, and uh there's a couple of the folks, Steve uh I met Steve, which is one of his, you know, helpers, assistants, I don't know. He he works there as well. Uh it was that the brewery is really, really cool. It's not something that you see nowadays, which is really awesome. He brews all in like the European, like original style. I mean, interesting. I what mean, is, original so, as original as you can be. He clearly uses ferment, like <laughs> modern he, age. He, he grinds his grain with rocks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a windmill out back. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so it's not quite to that, but does he ev- serve the the beer in the traditional way too? Yes, he does. So this is uh, everything he serves is room temperature. So I think it's like fifty three degrees or something. I don't know. That's not room temperature, but uh, it's 
but it's around there the is average. where what he serves all yeah. of his beers at. Now, ninety percent of the audience just kind of cringed when they heard you say that. Well, Can you give them a little bit more insight? Thirty-three percent of the hosts did. <laughs> <laughs> well, so for these kind of beers, if you think about it, uh, and actually a cool fun fact, they have. I think he said there were like twelve different beers that they brew, and that's it. Like he's not going to go more, go less. He's he, he brews twelve beers, and his newest recipe that he uses is from 350 ad wow that's the that's the newest uh and then the other ones are dating back to like i think he said 1850 bc or something like that why, so why'd he go so young <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i got a, i got a fun story about that actually so i'll get to that in a minute but he so if you think about it when these beers were originally brewed there was no refrigeration outside of it hey it's cold out like that's that was refrigeration back then <laughs> so these beers are good and should be drank at room temperature because of the way that they have been like of like the way that they were brewed and these are the like the recipes from way back when these aren't new and improved or not that you can really new and improve dunkelweissens very much but tried and true recipes exactly yes is there is this is there a style of this type of brewery probably <laughs> you mean like a, is it, is, do are there other breweries that are doing this where they only brew ancient beers yeah is it like yeah like you know i i know it's a beer brewery but i wonder if there's like a special term for like what they're doing i you know he's he said that he brewed in antiquity and i don't know if that's necessarily what you would consider it but it's not really a, this isn't something that you see all the time maybe you do in other places but living in new england and living in tennessee I don't like you don't really come across a brewery that does these old style beers like this, but it's it's pretty cool. He has a relatively I say small, but it's not that small operation right now. Uh, he's looking to expand and some fun things about that is he originally he wasn't going to he, he made this brewery just to distribute. Like he has a ton of bottles, uh some kegs and he was just going to distribute uh make beer and distribute but because people were coming in and saying like, hey, you know, can we have a beer? Can we have a beer? Can we sit down and have a beer? He actually has this like nice little sitting area now. <laughs> because, oh, cool. Hmm. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, and he's looking to become nationally distributed uh, once he expands a little bit more. He wants to buy out the rest of the building to expand. And then you should be able to see Gladiator beers on the shelves everywhere, which will be pretty cool. That's cool. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. And some of the other cool things is everything that he does. So James is ex-military. So everything he does is like built on, you know, mobility and things can change at the drop of a hat. So instead of having like these big, like five, 10, 15 barrel fermenting systems, he's got, I think he said 24 one barrel ones that are all on wheels. So they can wheel things in, wheel things out. He's got a one barrel system right now that he runs, wheels them in, throw, gets them into the fermenter, the bottling station. All of that is inside this, like the brew house is what he, he called it. And, but he can move things around if, you know, versus having these big, big systems where once they're in place, they're in place. You can't move them anymore. Right. So oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was, it was really cool. And I mean, the people were awesome. Can't say enough. I can't say enough about the people in general when you go to breweries, I think, but they were nice enough to take take me out back and, you know, uh, let me ask a bunch of ridiculous questions and all of this. And there's one beer in particular that he is working on brewing. He hasn't brewed it yet. It's He's calling it the Tennessee Ninkasi. And That's an intriguing name. Yeah. So do you know who Ninkasi is? No, no. I never heard of that. So it is the Sumerian goddess of beer. Huh. Yes. And what there there's a there's a poem or hymn. It's a, called the Hymn to Ninkasi, and what it actually is is an ancient Mesopotamian beer recipe. That's really that, cool. Yeah. So, and I mean it's not written like, you know, boil for 1 hour, this that and the other thing, you know. There's <laughs> there's it, it's not like that. It's it's written as like a a poem. So, oh, you know, yeah, b born of the flowing water, tenderly cared for by the Ninshurag or Ninhursag, whatever the hell it is. Um, but anyways, it's like a poem. 
And what he's done is he's gone through and studied this over and over and over and over again. And he thinks he has the recipe down now, or he thinks he knows what the recipe is. So he's going to locally source everything for it from Tennessee and then brew this beer, which is, what, 5,000 years old? Okay. Yeah. So, so what At I least. want is when he brews it, I want you to send me a bottle. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. When when this comes out... I'm super intrigued right now, and I want to I want to drink it right now. Yeah. I'm... It, when he was telling telling me about this, I was like like jaws to the floor. I was like, I can't believe this is actually going to happen. And I asked him, I was like, I was like, this is going to happen, right? Because I'm going to put this on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he was like, Oh no, I'm doing it. I'm like, Okay, good. So it's cool. And of course, he's going to name it Tennessee Ninkasi, which is T N as the as the initials. So Tennessee, ah, gotta make sense. So, oh, there uh, you go. There it is. <laughs> yeah, but but really, really cool brewery. It was a lot of fun. They were really awesome. The beer was really good, and I'm gonna continue going back because <laughs> I th- I think that should yeah. be our, one of our next. We drink the same beer together. Beers. Oh, oh, oh that yeah. would be good. Well, I was gonna say for those of us, for people in the audience who can't wait to try this beer. I know that Dogfish Head has their. Um, I know that Dogfish Head has their Ancient Ales series. Um, oh. You might be familiar with the Midas Touch that they've done. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that one, and I'm not too sure on all of the details, but um, they they got the yeast for that beer. I think with ingredients found in 2,700 year old drinking vessels. Really? So similar oh, wow. idea, and they they use their whole ancient ale series. They use ancient recipes like um, what you're talking about. So definitely for you know for people who are looking to, you know after they hear this episode, they want to take their Valentine's date out and uh, get some ancient <laughs> beer. Look up the Dogfish Head uh, ancient ales, and you might be able to find one near you. Wow. Okay. Have, have either of you guys heard of a Gruet style beer? No. What's that? It is an ancient style beer um, that's made with a combination of herbs. It's a it's a hopless beer, if that makes any sense. Interesting. There's a brewery in Vermont. I actually have a bottle upstairs. I just it just dawned on me that's a Gruet. That's well, we'll have to break it out one day. But it's it's a hop, it's a beer made entirely without hops. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, it is an ancient style beer as well, too. So I wonder if it. I wonder if this the Gladiator brews that as well. I I'll remember it being to, really I'll good. I'll have to ask him. I don't remember him saying anything about it, but I'll I'll ask him next time I'm in. But anyways, that's my little bit of a new brewery highlight on Gladiator Brewing here in Clarksville. You check them out. They're on Instagram. They're on Facebook. They're basically everywhere, everywhere that we are. And if you're driving through Clarksville, they're worth a stop for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing them with us. Yeah. But with all of that being said... I it's been so long, Obert. I think you had some kind of beer trading, some something or other. Oh yeah, the Great Northern Beer Barter we did here. Yes, yes, that one. That did, one. Did you bring the three grand with you and just be like, "Hey, I'll trade you this stack of cash for beer for a year"? No, I did not. And honestly, I don't even know if that would have won because there was some pretty impressive entrants that were there. Hmm. Yeah, they had the Winter Carnival, so we had a parade, and it was just like any parade I was used to back home, except with more horses. I think. <laughs> most parades feature <laughs> <laughs> but then once the parade was over they shut down main street and ha- brought in a drinking booth basically and set up a stage and they had the beer barter and you know the first entries were pretty comical it was like oh here's a painting that my kid made um you know here's a song i wrote about my love of, like wish you were beer all that kind of thing but then the, pretty quickly they got into some some serious offers like um this one place did that makes kombucha they offered to trade ounce for ounce kombucha for beer Ooh, yeah that was wow that was actually a really good trade yeah i know i was like that's uh, you know that seems fair too ounce for ounce like you can't you can't beat that there was a fire dancer who showed up with a, a flaming hula hoop and did a, a dance performance, which I'm not really sure if the dance performance was what she was bartering, but it was. Uh, yeah. Um, she might maybe have been she offering was going to teach lessons. them. Yeah. yeah. Like, here's how to do this without burning yourself. Uh, okay. Maybe. Yeah. Because yeah. I was like, if she danced, she gave it all away. <laughs> right. 
there was at one point a, a pole dancer who basically i'm not sure if she was just what she was doing but she basically did a pole dance for the entire audience and uh <laughs> then offered offered lessons for the judges and the judges asked for maybe a private a private lesson <laughs> <laughs> They were. They asked a poor question though, because it was this like little, you know, this this twenty one year old petite girl, and and she was. They were like, well, if we trade you for all the beer, will you even drink it all anyway? <laughs> Which is a good <laughs> point, because you know, a case a week is a lot of beer. But the winning entrants were um, the Glacier Distilling Company, and they offered five barrels to use for the brewery to use for aging beers for whatever they want as well as a dunk tank full of whiskey. And they used the dunk tank to, one, they were going to dunk the owner of the brewery, in which he was totally not on board with. <laughs> but they were using the dunk tank to fundraise, and whoever was going to pitch the, the balls at the dunk tank, um, they auctioned off the balls to pitch it to the dunk tank for to fundraise for a uh, charity that helps disabled people experienced outdoor sports oh that's pretty cool yeah so they ended up raising like two thousand bucks and they did dunk the head brewer in a dunk tank full of whiskey which i'm sure he was not happy about <laughs> i can only imagine like i can only imagine that experience because like whiskey like i love whiskey and i'm about to shit all over whiskey in about a second i love whiskey <laughs> but the the smell like when you like when you have a glass of whiskey like the smell coming off the whiskey glass like if you're not really like like if you take a sniff and you're like, all right, I'm trying to figure out like what the flavor is, that's cool. But like if you're over like a giant tub of whiskey, that just stench has to just permeate yeah. every orifice of your body. I know. I couldn't imagine getting it in my eyes and mouth and all that. Oh, yeah. Well, well, your mouth, mouth kind mouth of for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's but like up your yeah. up your nose, like in your ears. Oh yeah, no, it sounds terrible. Ugh. Imagine if you had like had like a a. A, a scrape or something or a cut or ugh. yeah ugh. No, the, the whole crowd basically had to cheer him on to agree to do it because he was not he was totally not going to do it did he drink it while he <laughs> fell in it uh, he came out pretty quick but i'm sure just through osmosis he might have gotten drunk but uh it's funny because <laughs> you know they had the dunk tank on stage covered up in a big tarp and then they pulled the dunk tank off, and it was pretty cool. And then after that, the fire dancer went up. And then I was like, wait, I'm pretty sure the fire dancer didn't know there was going to be a giant tank of whiskey <laughs> on the stage with her oh, when boy. she agreed to do this. I could see this ending really badly, but fortunately, there was no mishaps. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I, even sitting in the audience, like you must have been able to smell the whiskey coming off oh, the Oh, yeah. Dunk it, it was pretty tank. strong. Yeah, I can only imagine what it was like to dunk in there. And I have to imagine that the, the distillery spent more on that entire process than they got in beer for a year. I have to imagine it was just bad whiskey, like whiskey that oh, didn't meet the quality standards. <laughs> well, I'm sure they're not using the best, the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to dunk you in a tank of Pappy. Yeah. So I'll have to feature them on the show, Glacier Distilling, at some point in the future. I've yeah. been there before. They're a good place. Um, I'll have to bring some of their, their liquor in and we'll have to talk about them on the pod. Very cool. Yeah. Winners of the 2019 Great Northern Beer Barter. Yeah. What about you, Ted? What have you been up to? Anything? Um, I traveled to Austin this past week. I, I got to try some really good whiskey. It was overall a good trip. I, I mean, it was the first, you know, it was my first trip on keto. So I was able to stay pretty good. But yeah, drinking whiskey out and about while eating barbecue is never a bad, never a bad time. Now, I think I, think I, I remember text got a text. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That that begged begged to differ. <laughs> yeah, I think it said alcohol sucked. <laughs> uh, something along those lines. Yeah. yeah if, if you want a reference, go back to what thirty plus drinking, drinking was bad. Was bad. Yeah. yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't all good, but it was a, like Austin's a fun city. You know, it's the number one ranked city to live in in America. Oh, so very cool. So to go there and to experience there, you know, it's kind of like Austin is like Nashville. Like they're kind of one in the same type of city. Where there's okay. live music, there's live music everywhere. They basically have that one street in Austin. It's Sixth Street in Nashville. It's Broadway, but they're basically right. the same idea. I mean, it's a whole bunch of bars lining up and down a road. You just walk up and down it, and it's pretty cool. But yeah, it was an overall fun time. Yeah, it's too bad. Too bad. Um, well, I mean, you know, good thing we're doing the hashtag Tudfit journey, but it's too bad you couldn't try some cool Austin beers while you were there. 
Yeah, they Austin is also on top of being you know the number one city to live in in America, as voted on by multiple websites. It is the beer capital of Texas, which I didn't realize going into it. So there is a shit ton of really good breweries in Austin, in or around Austin, including New England IPA style breweries that people from the Northeast have just moved down there and been like, hey, you know what? I'm opening up a brewery down here where the weather's awesome and you know I'm going to get a lot of people. I, I, I missed out on half of the experience, I think. Mm. Yeah, well, next time after so after the wedding and all that stuff, you can do hashtag Tud Fat and like oh, I like it. We have the sequel. We have the <laughs> sequel go back to Austin already. <laughs> <laughs> go back to Austin. We could we could just drink all the beers. It's fine. Yeah. Austin, you want to do a live show for us? Let's do it. Listen, next time I'm there, well, I I will do a live show from Austin. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> oh, I did want to mention something. So, how right were we about that Super Bowl? Just pull, pull, <laughs> right? Yeah, pulling pull the I, curtain back a little bit. We recorded the last episode before the Super Bowl happened. Yeah, that entire Dana beginning. actually, <laughs> yeah, Dan actually made the comment that she couldn't tell. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. I thought it was going to be pretty obvious that we were like we hadn't we hadn't seen the Super Bowl yet, but yeah, we were pretty spot on. Yeah, right. I mean, there were missed field goals. There was there was uh, what was a it? bad it was, call. It was, Bad call. There was defense uh, heavy, so you know, not very, not very exciting. I mean, I'm pissed we were that upset New England, with who won. I'm pissed yeah. that New England won. Yeah. Like that was awesome. That was awful. Yeah, uh, yeah. we all you know, knew as, that was coming. Right. As somebody who lives in New England and is not a Patriot fan, it has been brutal. Yeah, I can only imagine. It's it's so nice. Not like I still don't like the Patriots, but it's so nice to not have to deal with it. It actually got to the point where, like, I don't know why, but I'm at I was at work and like people were talking about football and this that and the other thing and and tom brady's name came up and i immediately didn't like tear him to shreds which is yeah you know weird for me so i don't know if i'm just being desensitized to <laughs> i mean i think it's a little bit of both but i i think at the same like if you didn't live in new england and obviously you know neither of us are in over included so none of the three of us are patriot fans i think if you lived outside of new england like you can appreciate what tom brady is but like if you're a non-patriot fan in new england your life has been miserable for the past 18 years. Yep, because that's pretty true. everybody just wants to talk shit because we're all New Englanders and we're loud and annoying and boisterous. But I mean, the Colts won one Super Bowl, so. But I think <laughs> if, like, you, if you lived in Tennessee or you lived in Montana or you lived in Texas or California or wherever, I think watching Tom Brady would be a different experience because you're like, holy shit, we're seeing something that we're never going to see again. But in New England, I'm like, no, I just want everybody to shut the fuck up. Yeah, I hear that. So yeah, so that's... I, I thought that was a really cool thing. I wanted to mention that while we were. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe Tud Cleo like siphoned off some of his powers. That could for be us. it. That did I happen. Think it was, it. Yeah, Tud Cleo. I mean, yeah, we got to bring Tud Cleo back. We haven't, we haven't seen Tud. I know, mean, if Tud can't drink beer, he can at least telepathically drink beer. I think oh, next, okay. I think next week we'll have to do a Tud Cleo sex, segment. Okay, so, I mean, it's all about it's all about the stars and the the spirits and the the crystal ball and stuff, you know. No, wait, is Crystal coming back? <laughs> no, 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 not yet. <laughs> the world can't handle that. <laughs> so uh, so we'll see, you know, when Tud Cleo's in the, when the moment is right, Tud Cleo will return at the spur of the moment. I like it. Yeah. So Chris, what what else, what has been going on in your life? We should probably ask that. Oh, yeah. You know, not much. CJ's growing up and stuff. So that's pretty crazy. Everything's a kitty now. So he runs around and he calls everything a kitty. Even if it's not a kitty, he calls it a kitty. But <laughs> it's it's pretty it's pretty adorable. But he also knows a bee for some reason. I don't know. He's never seen a real bee. But he pointed, <laughs> he pointed to a bee in a book and went, it's a bee. And I was like, oh, man, that was like your first sentence was, it's a bee. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, the kids, I assume the, it's on the second page of every alphabet book. So, <laughs> uh, that, you know, that's possible. Possible. Just, yeah. just as long as he doesn't like run outside and like see a bee and like try to grab it. Yeah, oh, they, be friends with my bee. Oh, he's going to though. This kid is not afraid of anything. But yeah, so I mean, that's that's a lot of fun. I mean, I highly recommend having a kid. So, uh, but other than that, you know, went to Gladiator, like I mentioned. I actually went to Tennessee Valley where they had a tap takeover by one of the assistant brewers there who actually follows us on Instagram at Lupalin R Lord. Uh he was having like a going away party, so he put four of his beers on tap and they were uh they were pretty solid beers. So that was a lot of fun. Nice. You know, got to got to hang out there. It's a great spot, as I said. 
talked to him a little bit, just a smidge, and had some really good beers. He did a raspberry lemonade sour. It's wishing wishing it were wishing it was summer sour, and it was pretty pretty darn good. Nice, nice. That raspberry lemonade has become over the past week one of my favorite flavors. So. <laughs> 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 so but yeah i mean other than that just you know doing doing that that kind of stuff dad stuff and drinking stuff awesome nice. so i think with that i think it's time we go to our handles yep woo, woo. handle time we gotta we gotta dust the we gotta blow the dust off this mug yeah i know right collecting plenty of dust here um i'll go first okay i have okay yeah i have a non-alcoholic beverage recommendation here is it raspberry lemonade polar seltzer? Yes, it is. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just I just started brewing coffee using um, the pour over method, where you basically just take a filter and you put uh, ground coffee in it and rest it on a cup and just pour boiling water on top of it. So like so like the way that a coffee percolates in a percolator, just without the percolation. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think basically, yeah, it just you just do a single individual cup filter. They sell devices that hold a filter right over the mug, and I find it makes a very smooth, drinkable, not too bitter coffee. Like I normally have to put cream in coffee, but when I use pour over technique, I can just drink it black. So have you so, have you done a French press before? Uh, yeah, I have a French press here as well. Um, so I like they... the French press. But the French press, you know, there's a little more dishes to do. But do they taste, does the end product taste different? It does, in my okay. mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think I like the pour over a little better. So coffee technique, pour over, handle. I've never tried that before. Yeah, me neither. I've drank many a gallon of coffee in my day. Yeah, there's a new coffee place near me called Folklore, and they do pour over coffees. And that's where I started drinking it. And it was so good. I was like, I got, I got to start doing this at home. So I've yeah. I've only recently gotten to the coffee craze. So it's good for keto. It is, but I used to just never like coffee, and now I feel like I'm giving in to like I'm giving in to the devil. Yeah, I hear it, you. It's really not the devil. It's delicious, and I love it. And if I don't have one or two cups every day, I am literally a monster. But see, that's the thing. That's like, the thing. I yeah, never I relied on it before. Yeah, and now I'm like I don't like I still don't think I rely on it. But like I like I like the flavor. It's t- oh, it's it also delicious. Good, yes, but like I used to just like I'm. I'm a naturally perky person. That's perky, fair. You could definitely perky say angry, that. but I'm perky. <laughs> yeah, you are definitely a perky person. <laughs> okay, Todd, let me hand off the uh, frosty mug to you. Here we go. What do awesome. you got for us this week? Thanks. Um, so as as I'm doing keto, as we discussed in length earlier, my handle this week is going to be a type of chocolate that you can eat on keto. It is called Zero Chalk. You can buy it on Amazon. Um, it's like, I'm going to warn people, it's like $15 for like a, for on Amazon, but they send you two, six or two, like six packs of chocolate. So you get 12 chocolate bars for 15 bucks. Nice. That's better than most baseball fundraisers, which is where I normally get most of my chocolate. So. Right. <laughs> this is, this is high quality chocolate. It's, um, you know, free trade organic chocolate, but it's, it's very, uh, it's very dark, obviously, cause you know, we with keto you try to cut out sugar it's one or two carbs per bar depending on the, the flavor that you get it's either almond or hazelnut and it it solves that like that craving for like i need something sweet like right now on keto because obviously you're cutting sugar out everywhere else in your diet so if you have a sweet tooth which as a beer drinker all of us will it kind of solves that problem where you eat it you're like all right i feel satisfied now so nice. so i assume they make it with zero chalk it, it, yeah <laughs> it's zero chalk because it's supposed to be close to zero carbs i mean it's it's one or two but it's you know it's their branding but i recommend anybody who wants to try to diet to go grab this because it is delicious and it's you know all six bars come in a package so when you open it up you can just grab a single serving bar and just eat it and you're good to go so go check it out zero chalk amazon that's pretty cool yeah i mean i think that's one of the toughest things like when i was trying to not be you know fat and stuff it was uh, having that sweet tooth that you mentioned. It's the toughest thing to get rid of because you're just like, I want ice cream, so I'm going to eat all the ice cream. Yeah. And then I do. <laughs> and I never thought that I'd be like, like, I don't usually have a sweet tooth, but I think the beer kind of curved that sweet tooth because beer is naturally sweet. 
Right. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. That if you if you're used to drinking, having a beer after dinner, it's basically dessert, right. as we discussed earlier. <laughs> right. So go check that out, people. I'm I'm gonna get the. You know what? It's not just hashtag Tudfit. It's hashtag DAWF Podfit. Okay, you're yeah, recruiting I need, us. I into need this. that so bad right yeah. now. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah we all gotta look good for Ted's wedding that's true that is true <laughs> we all need yeah. to have you know the washboards six pack abs I don't know if that'll ever happen but you know <laughs> I, you know of all the things I don't think I could give up beer for that long mm. this would be a very boring that's... podcast I think if we if we all did <laughs> <laughs> what are you drinking raspberry lemonade salt so good <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so uh Chris do you wanna you wanna share your handle yeah sure why not I guess that's how this works, huh? I think so. well, we we have to remember how we used to do this. So, yeah. <laughs> so my handle is actually a little bit of uh, nostalgia, new fun game for your phone. So I know one of you have played this game before. At least I believe you have. Have you guys ever played the Lemmings? Yes. No. No? Okay. Yeah. I I, I would check it out. I knew Obert did. I wasn't sure if Tud did or not. Oh, I'm excited for this handle. What is a, <laughs> what is a Lemmings? So it's essentially, and Obert, you could probably explain it better than I can, but it's a game where you have these little lemmings, they're little people, and you have to get them from, essentially from point A to point B, going through a bunch of different obstacles, you know, digging, building bridges, building staircases, all this fun stuff. And, and the reason they're called lemmings is because they will just walk in a straight line, even if it's off a cliff, and die. Yes, yes. So every level, you have to save X amount of lemmings. So you have to save five of the 20 lemmings, or 15 lemmings, or however many there are. And you have to t tell the lemmings to you know build and use the umbrella and all this fun stuff to get from point A to point B. Well, that's the old like computer game, and I think it was on a couple consoles as well. They just released a version of it for your phone so what's that called it's called lemmings okay so if i just search lemmings in the app store it'll pop right up it should it popped up for me awesome. so. <laughs> um and how much does this, does this app cost chris so that's part of it it is free to play but it's like one of those games where you have so many moves and once you run out of moves you have to wait for it to re regenerate you know because there's pay to play aspects of it okay but it's pretty fun it you know, I played it for a little bit today, got through a couple of the worlds, and then had to, you know, wait for my moves to regenerate because I'm not paying money for it. But you know, it's oh, uh, it. But it, it was it was fun. Hit myself right in the right in the nostalgia a little bit because I remember playing it a little bit with uh, Obert back in the day. So it was a uh, it was a good good thing. And yeah. I was like, yeah, well, people I'm need to know. Downloading it right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Your handle worked on me, at least. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. So, but yeah, there you go. Go check out Lemmings on the App Store or wherever you get your phone games and give it a shot. Play it Play it for a little bit. Dana was having fun with it, too. So, you know, it's it's for everybody. <laughs> the Chris's and the Dana's of the world. Right, right, right. We are clearly two completely different people. <laughs> <laughs> with that, thank you all for listening. Um, we'd like to thank the people that have provided today's drinks. So I'm going to go ahead and thank Smirnoff for their spiked sparkling seltzer berry lemonade, as well as Tito's Vodka for their vodka. Um, we will do a, t a full Tito's Vodka review in the future. I'd like to thank Gladiator Brewing here in Clarksville for their Spartacus Dunkelweizen. I'm going to thank Jeremiah Johnson for the Mountain Man Scotch Ale. Please follow us on all the social medias, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Untapped at DAWF Podcast. Um, hashtag follow the email with comments, questions, general thoughts. No, concerns, don't want hatred. the general thoughts. Yes, we do. Uh, the email is is dawfpodcast at gmail dot com. Even if you want to share with us what you had for breakfast that morning, we want to read it. I know Obert doesn't, but Chris and I do. <laughs> Definitely share us all your your thoughts. So if something random pops in your head, let us know. We're we're more than more than willing to read. Um, let us know if you guys want stickers. We all still have stickers, I believe. I don't think we've used them all. I believe we're all leaving them in random spots around our states. So if you see it, make sure you take a picture of it and tag us in it on social media. I'm just saying, hey, I saw where you posted this this sticker, and I was here too. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to this fine podcast. And make sure that you log on to iTunes and give us a rating and a five-star five rating and a comment and a review. 
it's the way people can find us and it helps more people listen to us anything else guys yeah i actually got a couple things so sure. uh, at least one thing so first i will be a guest uh next monday on a instagram live beer review so Ooh. if you don't follow us on instagram please check that out it's going to be with fellow co-host of the show jenna of the brew locker she is going to her and her boyfriend do live beer reviews every monday and they're so nice enough to have me join them next week so it'll probably be about 15 20 minutes of us talking about beers and drinking and answering questions that's exciting and that's going to be on monday the 18th for folks yes february 18th 2019 nice yep yep so check that out Do you know what beer you're reviewing you know i don't yet don't want to give it away i know i I wanted to tease it a little bit i have an idea and it's going to be a good one but i'm not sure which one yet so it's really nice because i don't like doubling up on breweries i haven't done it yet but it gives me like a way to review the same brewery <laughs> in a different format. Yeah. So. But yeah, so pretty excited about that. That'll be a lot of fun. Anything else? Yeah, no, I wanted to, one more thing real quick is we're, we're getting close to a thousand followers on Instagram. And I think once we hit a thousand, we're going to do a giveaway just like Chris did with some Tennessee beers. We're going to do with some Montana beers. Woo. Ooh, yeah. I win. Me. Pick um, me. Pick me. Pick we'll, me. We'll talk about that later, Todd. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you have to you have to barter for them. Yeah. <laughs> I have cash. <laughs> yeah. But no, we we had the first one was a lot of fun, pretty big success. What did you give away, Chris? Oh, I gave away I gave away six beers and a glass and then some swag, some stickers and stuff like that from like local breweries. Um and our winner actually, I don't think we ever announced the winner, which makes us a really bad podcast, but we'll give him give we'll highlight him right now. <laughs> Uh, fellow Colts fan up in Indiana, uh, Rag City Drunken Rebellion. That was his Instagram handle. He won our 500 giveaway, and uh, he enjoyed some of the Southern Grist Blueberry Cobbler. And Ooh, that's a will, good beer. Uh, ra- yeah, it's a very good beer. So, so he won the 500. Let's see, can, can he make it two for two? Who knows? Yeah. So if you're so if you've been intrigued by some of these beers that I've I've highlighted from Montana, you never had a Montana beer before. I know we have a lot of our listeners are from far away. Then make sure you're following us on Instagram. You know, now's your chance. Get in, get in now while we still haven't hit, hit a thousand yet, because we're gonna probably keep the contest open for a little bit. We'll uh, announce the details when we hit hit it. But you know, it's never too early to follow us. So so get on, join people. Up. Yeah, hashtag Let's get on this. <laughs> hashtag Obert. Let's get on this. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, my name's Todd. My name's Chris. And I'm Obert. And remember, if you're drinking alone, do it with friends. But no, we got to work on that hashtag, Tud, fit, parentheses, in the suit, parentheses. Yeah, yeah, I know. We got to make sure that you get your, your keto right. And then, and then I'm, I'm excited more, not going to lie, but I'm excited for the touchback. Hashtag, hashtag. <laughs> <laughs>